part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's... This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Worldwide, and you're listening to The Krypton Report. June is fast approaching, and that is not only Superman Day, but it's also the 10th anniversary of Man of Steel. Check out our website on Facebook for the information to join, as we will be updating it, our live Man of Steel rewatch. We'll be streaming, and we'll be making an online party to rewatch Man of Steel. So please add that to your calendar. And remember... Look up in the sky! And now, part two of our live stream that we had, our live show, with a bonus audio of a video I created on my theory for Flash. So enjoy. No, no, we wait. get the Lark and, the, yeah, <laughs> the Clark and Lois. I meant that's what I have for this, but I... I'm, yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, for that, I meant the next big thing, geez, uh, tongue-tied here, <clears throat> is <laughs> Pia... The- yeah, the, the, the and, large overarching plot of this episode, which actually impacts the next episode. Yeah, Pia and Lana have bonded. Or not Lana, Lois. I'm done. I'm leaving. Bye. Okay, Pia and Lois have bonded. They're friends. Um, she feels really bad for trying to prod Pia for any information on Bruno. And not um, just cancer friends, as she refers to. She wants to be friends' friends. Yeah. She even says about bringing her family to the farm. You know, invites them and which they bring another joke back that I like where Clark isn't very good on the grill, but his burgers are okay. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Like he's not a very good cook. (laughs) Um, which it was funny earlier when Kyle's like, You put any rub on these ribs? Yeah. Like, um, and what we find in so Lois is there, Clark's investigating, he confronts Bruno as Clark, as a reporter. I do want a side note. I am sad as much time we spent in Metropolis. We have not gone back to the Daily Planet. Like, who owns the Daily Planet now? Like, who's well? In they charge? work at the Gazette. They I, own the Gazette. I know, they but I'm part like, because Morgan Edge owned the Daily Planet, who was Clark's brother, ah, who's no yeah. longer there. So, what happened to the Daily Planet? Just throwing that out there, okay? And and we, we find out in the next episode that Luther is in prison. So he's still making money, but <laughs> he's still he's in prison. So who who <laughs> owns you know anything basically? And the other thought is, um, we, we've been in Metropolis and we haven't seen Bibbo yet. I'm just saying, okay, I'm a little, a little frustrated. We haven't got any more like callbacks, okay, to Metropolis. But Clark has this awesome argument that he gets into about the treatment and the hospital's history to Bruno, and Bruno's getting front. He goes, and Bruno, he says, Clark tells him like, is saving, is killing people to save one person worth it? And Bruno's basically, when we're talking about your wife, and he is very angry. And Clark pauses and is like, are we sure we're talking about my wife? Then we have a beautiful shot scene of Pia and Lois sitting there. And th- they made up because uh, Lois had offended Pia with all her questions about Bruno and accusations on Bruno. And what we have is we have Bruno walking in. With and, Clark. With yeah. Clark. And Lois is like caught off guard at first, but then she realizes that Pia is Bruno's wife. Yeah. And that Bruno has done everything in this hospital and everything he has done is to save her from her cancer. So it was, it was the, it was the prior episode, right? Where we got the reveal that Pia was Bruno's wife. To Br- us. Uh, yes. well, no, the, the mask, the, the, the mask. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was it the was. end of the last episode, right? Not yes. this one. Okay. So, and it was just today when we were watching that, like her name's Pia. Like, of course she's Adamana Pia. Pia. We didn't even, I didn't even think of it. That's what he said. He said, of course she's on me. You get it, right? I go, what? He's like, she's Pia. Adamana Pia. And I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. It was like so easy. Like it should just smack you in the face, but it was like. Sh- it's kind of like D Bloom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then the episode ends where so this was Pia's last treatment. She's home with Bruno. And then who should arrive but their child? Their son. And their son. And their son whose name happens to be Mateo. Man. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. 
I almost thought at one point that maybe because we find out that this is kind of rolling into the next episode that Bruno had kept his marriage secret, that maybe yeah. Matteo never mm-hmm. took his, his father's last name. Oh, he's not Matteo Mannheim. Yeah, like because I kind of want like because I figured like there may have been something where John Henry may like being the kind of person he is and the dad he is looking into Matteo may have like who is this kid and it came up Matteo whatever Pia's name yeah uh Anamana so Matteo <laughs> Anamana uh so I I had that thought because I feel like John would have like really like researched whatever boy um his daughter was going with that seems very plausible and, and Gina with, and I but... picked this you know it made sense and <clears throat> this is rolling into the next episode as well um I like that Mateo's not a plant. Yeah. Like he genuinely, because like I told James, what I realized is Bruno did not know about Natalie because this Earth's John Henry never had a Natalie. So when he says, I know your family and all this, like he knew about like John's sister, his mom, his dad. Now, all of was, John Henry's family on this Earth. So there really wasn't a flag as to Natalie being John Henry's daughter. Yeah. All right. So now we're going to roll into season three, episode eight. Guess who's coming to dinner? Which is a play off the old movie. Guess who's coming to dinner? Uh, Clark and Chrissy try to pique Lois's interest in investigating Bruno, while Jordan inevitably threatens John standing with the fire department. And Nat has a dinner. So Nat goes to dinner with Mateo and his parents. So, small story. Basically, John is now part of the junior fire department. Um, he shows up, you know, with coffee, but they all clap him in and that he's now part of the junior fire department. There's a call. He asked Mr. Cushing if he could go. Uh, Mr. Cushing is like, yep, come on. And Since you can go, but stay next to the truck. And he you can't be involved. You can only watch. So he goes and he's by the truck. And what happens is Jordan flies in, saves the dude, busts out the door, and um, <clears throat> leaves a guy. Well, John's checking the guy as Kyle and them come running out. And, you know, Kyle yells at him saying, why did you go into the fire? I can't trust you. You're a liability. It all felt kind of clunky. I'll be honest. But I understand the point. Because one, John has no mask. Yeah. Two, if you look at how that door came off, that door came out. Yeah, oh, yeah. So John would have had to try to get in and couldn't have blown that door out in any way. But it, it puts John in a place where now, you know, he may be let go from the fire department, which is his big thing. Um, jump to later, Jordan and Jonathan get in an argument. And Jordan lets basically, you know, yells at Jonathan about he was saving the guy who's trying to do what's right. But he yells at him like, I have heat vision and you don't. Yeah, basically, he can only he can be the only hero because he's the only one with powers. Yep, very douchey. And then at the end, uh, their next big interaction is he apologizes to John, and John's still not sure if he's going to be fired. But what he finds out is Mr. Cushing. They found evidence of ice in and, the fire, which there was ice at the fire where Kyle almost died. So he's putting things together that there might be some super powered person putting them out. And two times, uh, Jonathan references references Jordan as Superboy, which is kind of cool because they officially are giving him that moniker. You know? mm-hmm. um, and we see Jordan and Sarah hanging out uh, together, just as friends. Yeah, because that's a thing. They're they're hanging out. They're listening to the Cure because you know stepping up. Lana has Cure tickets that she had for her and Kyle. Which she's trying to get rid of. Yes. Um, so she tries to give him to Chrissy to take Kyle, but she can't because she's got things going on. Clark can't. Because Which is take... a fun scene. Yeah. Fun interaction. It was <laughs> it was hilarious. We, were, we watched it. It was me, uh, James, Jamie, and Jania. And it's great because Clark's acting. He's sitting and he's like, look, I didn't even use the super thing. I could hear your heartbeat. How nervous yeah. you are when Lana was around. <laughs> right. And I told James, I'm like, okay, the cure. Like, that's like more of an 80s band because Lana says hearing their stuff took her back to high school well, well I'm like, I mean I'm I was a I was a, a, a 90s and a 2000s teenager 
like, but I listen to music from the eighties. You know what I mean? So it's like yeah, the way she talks about the cure is like, as if they were like the band of the time. Oh, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and I was like, so I would, I would put them graduating. I think, okay. We're talking about our timelines. Do, do they talk about what year they graduate in the scene where Clark leaves in the flashback and then he comes back? Ooh, I'd have to check it out. I don't recall anything about them saying, like, we graduated this time or not. I was trying to remember if there was any evidence of, like, when he leaves. When we see the young actor as Clark he right. leaves, he's talking to Martha and, like, he goes away. Um, because in my mind, I'm putting them graduating, like, in 1999, 2000. Because that'd be, mm. you know, that'd put them at 42 you know okay um yeah i mean so if it was like modern time and it was like 23 you'd have to take away at least maybe 25 years down to like 18 so yeah maybe uh because uh, i look at i graduated 1998 see i look graduation at, i graduated in 2003 i'm 38 yeah my cousin graduated 99 she's four years older than me so that puts her at 42 so I'm thinking, you know, they graduated in 98, 99, 2000. Right. That, that puts them in those. Early. I think before 2000, but pretty yeah. pretty late 90s. Yeah. 98, 99. Yeah, to get them over that 40 <clears throat> hump that we were yeah. talking about. Um, but, you know, so Lois is trying to, like, give, or Lana's trying to give away these tickets to The Cure. And Sarah's like, I don't really know their music, which I would say is wrong. Because as much as emo and everything Sarah was earlier, The Cure is like that proto emo band that even if you were like dashboard confessional my chemical romance person you're like the cure right you knew them and you knew enough of their songs i was gonna say say what like 311 uh uh oh they covered the song (laughs) they slayed awesome that uh love song cover like i love the 311 cover yeah um so you know jordan points out to sarah that basically like going to the concert with your mom is not about the music. And Sarah's like, yeah, it is. You like, she like, he's like, it's about spending time with your mom. So at the end of the episode, we see them kind of dancing to some cure music. That was actually really good though. That interaction in the kitchen, you know, she's like, look at it from John's point of view and, and see why this could be a problem for him. And then he turns around and says, well, you know, look at this from your mom's point of view. She's just, it's about the time with you. And then she's like, are you trying to make me feel guilty? Yeah, yeah, whoosh, and he's gone. <laughs> oh yeah, he's just. Uh, speaking of, um, earlier in the episode, which was great, was Clark and Chrissy are now investigating the Mannheim stuff. Lois doesn't want to because she, you know, befriended Pia, and uh, Chrissy's like, "Is any of going to fly?" And Clark flies Chrissy to Metropolis, and when they get back later, she's like, "That was." She's like having this, like, I think I'm going to throw up, but like, I learned how to hold my stuff in college. Yeah. So like, <laughs> there's one thing I learned in college is how to rally. And uh, <laughs> it was hilarious. Um, just seeing them two work together was nice. Um, just yeah. you know, showing that kind of bond. Like, yeah, you like, never see that. He works there. He's we, part we, of the Gazette. We speculated how we think that Chrissy would have been Chloe had that name not been tarnished before. Yeah. Um, so in my head, they're very similar, but they're not the same. Um, All right. So we have that going on. And then what we have, they have this article that they're ready to roll with about Bruno and it's outing that he has his secret wife and Lois doesn't want to do it. And then Sam shows up with tons of files from Diggle from Argus and they really get into the nitty gritty of the murders that are connected to Bruno. And Lois says, if I would have had these files years ago, I could have put him away. And they, you know, they get into it. And it really sparks Lois's in journalism side again. And Clark and Lois have this really good conversation about their responsibility as journalists and what to do. Yeah, actually, that was a part in this episode I was worried about was like, are they going to. It's just something that you're 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 worried about watching these shows like are, are, when when somebody turns like last episode, it was very touching um, you see Bruno. Pia and Bruno and Clark and Lois all kind of together under this under this common this common trouble this of, com- of like human emotions. Like, yeah, it's like for a moment, the, yeah. we put aside all our fighting because we 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 share a moment as humans, as yeah. People. And but it, and but the the idea being like 
when after that's over, is Clark going to be like, it's back well, on. we got, yeah, it's back on. We got to do this. And he wasn't mean about it. You know, I don't expect Clark to be mean or anything, but he wasn't like, like really like pushing her hard to do yeah. it. You know, it was very, very kind, very respectful to his wife about how she's feeling, about how she doesn't want to do this because she's friends with Pia. Um, it was just, it was a very genuine interaction on, on his part as to, well, we do know that he's this gun runner, that he's this, um, that he's this uh, uh, arms dealer and all this other stuff, that he's still a bad person, that he still is a criminal and that we still need to pursue this. Yeah. So it was it was very well very well handled. I think the best representation of that same kind of mindset in this episode is and we're going to get there here now is basically John Henry drops Nat off to go have dinner with Mateo's family. Yeah, and actually that's that's the flip side. That's totally opposite of what Clark does. And and, and so <laughs> um Mateo, like they're having a great time. We, we see Bruno in this good light and how much he's having fun as a father. And, you know, all of them are having a good dinner. John, meanwhile, visits his sister and they have this kind of understanding, like how they both recognize they miss each other's counterpart. And she, she thanks him for, you know, installing the security stuff about the, for her family. He's like, you know, I'm very surprised they didn't do an episode that was just John Henry centered. Yeah, of him doing all that security stuff, telling mm-hmm. more of his backstory, and we learn more about this world's John Henry. Right. I, in that scene, the thing I liked was he said, "My mess," and and his sister was like, "Not your mess, my, brother. my brother's mess." Yes, my brother's mess is what's what's got you into this. Um. Yes. Yeah. That was, was, really, was, was really good. I like that part. And so, basically, pulling that around, she asked about Nat. And she says the restaurant's name. She says that's where my brother used to meet Bruno Mannheim. So then, boom, John Henry's out of there. We cut back to the dinner, and it's framed really well of where I'm sitting. You see the door, and like I generally had like aspiration, and he comes in, and Nat says, "Dad," and they all turn around, and then you see like everyone else. In I was the gonna restaurant. say, I like Mateo goes like, "Hey, your dad's here." Yeah. He has no idea. So once again, we Mateo genuinely is just a, an innocent bystander, honestly. Um, and we see that everyone in the restaurant basically is like personnel of Bruno Mannheim's. Yeah. They all get up, they're pulling guns and Bruno says, Nat, Natalie, is this your father? She's like, yes. And then Bruno man, like, this is where it shows that he's a bad dude. Yeah. Because I said, I said to Jania, like, you would think they'd almost be like, oh, sh- we gotta, all right, just take your daughter and yeah, go. Like, you squash peace, this. And- like, peace, like, real quick, take your daughter, go. We didn't know you didn't, like, but no, Bruno's like, he starts, um, they pull the guns. He's like, I told you what would happen if you came back around here. Yeah. He's like, take the kids outside to one of his henchmen. He starts wrapping, uh, you know, Nat- knocking uh, around, his, on, around his knuckles where he has big rings. Um, Come on. Come on. What? I can't do that because that's that's... Right. We're live. We're live. Oh, he's only five o'clock. Yeah, I know. We just ran over. Hey, guys, it's Brian. Look, Brian's here. Hello, Hello. people. <laughs> so, Brian, welcome. Oh, hey, man. We just got held back because uh, we're live. Who cares? Surprise, it's Jamie's birthday. So, Janine yeah. went out to get her cake and everything. Just kind yeah, of she went out, her. pushed it all back a little bit. Yeah, so we, we didn't want to start until after she got back with the cake. Oh, wait. We're wrapping up. I Good to see you. Play. I just want to play freaking Zelda. That's all I want. Well, we're right. glad you're here. We're almost done. We're Go ahead. Up. We'll catch up with you. Yeah, you can <laughs> hang out with us. How's it going, Brian? Boys. We're glad you're here. Sorry for breaking the law. No, nah, nah. you're fine. I just have to edit. It's not a big deal. Live is one thing, but when I put it up, it comes up. So what are we talking about? We're finishing up this past week's Superman Lois. Damn, what's this past week? We're at the dinner scene. No, I didn't. I didn't. All right, well then. Yeah. You you're going to get spoiled. Yeah. yeah, you don't want to get spoiled. It's really good. James We're didn't finishing to watch out. it until today because Amazon. Prime yeah, it's not up on Prime. It. The new episode isn't on Prime yet. I don't know so why. I couldn't buy it. I couldn't buy it all week. I know. Super- I know. Superman sucks. <laughs> Get out of here. Oh no. <laughs> what happened? Brian's being sent to the Phantom Zone. Right. Brian. I was say, where's Woo! the projector? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> hey, 
I'll just be sitting with Mon L, chugging beers. <laughs> I'll be high. All right. All right. Well, we've done like five minutes. This is the fun of live, people. You never know who's just going to show up at your house. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. You help me out with that, Mr. Narwhal. Thanks. <laughs> Mr. Narwhal. That's why um, live is we do it once a month because I couldn't handle this all the time. But yeah. It is a big difference. Um, because you know, he, Bruno straight is like, he straight up pulls like, guns in front of the kids, has his bodyguard take the kids out with guns. He has no respect. The fact that John had no idea yeah. that their kids were together. Cause like I said, can I say that to Junia? Like I, you would think they would have backed off. Like we got to undo that. Like just go. Yeah. And he, she goes, no, that's not who Bruno is. No. Yeah. So that shows right there that this whole like good person that we had that moment with Clark and Lois and Pia, it's only good to the people he cares about. Right. They're so only good to the people he cares for. And then, so then all of a sudden we see John's suit. Like he had hit the thing. John's suit busts in. And Pia, like, it's really weirdly creepy to see her do her power without the mask. Right. How is like, it's very, like, her face. Like, the actress, mad props to her. She sells it. Like, yeah. The mouth. And the yeah, face. she oh. contorts pretty good. Like, and, like, the suit's mm. taking it. And we see it's wearing her down. But then, like, she goes to, like, she has a moment of reprieve. And, like, we see this awesome shot of how the suit goes on John. And he's just walking. Yeah. And then um, Clark hears it. And basically. Right after he hears he hears what's happening with John Henry. Right after they discover on a recorded tape of Lex Luthor supposedly confessing to killing Moxie and all of the 86ers uh, in South Metropolis. They discover, they hear the same buzzing, the same noise that comes when Anamatapia does her does her her sound. And we've already seen that she can that she can mimic mimic voices, sounds, with sound, voices yeah. Sound. And so they find I'm out that this right assassin, now. yeah, that's me. Uh, this assassin, <laughs> um, yes, it is. Uh, uh, you recorded the the recorded confession of Lex. So they find out that they put Lex away for crimes he didn't commit. Which is a great way of getting Lex in here without feeling shame. Absolutely. Like he just absolutely un- unravels from the mystery. And it actually it actually steps up Bruno too as as a big villain because not only is he just like this this guy of inner gang and he's just another crime boss. Like he helped take down he helped put Lex Luthor in prison so yep. he could have Metropolis. Yep, like that makes him a big, a big time villain in DC. Ooh, uh, hey. even Alora's back. She's like, hey, hey. Um, so basically, Superman shows up to protect John as his his suit's getting damaged, and Pia pushes herself to the limit to where she passes out, and Superman looks at her like looks at Bruno and says, "I have to take her to the hospital," and he and Bruno gives him like the nod, and boom, he's gone with her. And it was really good. And then Bruno tells John to leave. I'm surprised John didn't just like punch him in his face with the suit on. I know, right? Fly past him, deck him, and then grab Natalie and go. Yeah. Yeah, he should have. <laughs> uh, did you guys talk about the flash yet? No. Because James guys... hasn't watched any of it. Oh. So oh. That... you talking about the final season? Spoiler alert. Barry runs fast. Yeah, no way. Barry runs fast. Yes, wait, wait Ted. <laughs> you heard it here first, people. Say um, hi, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> she remembers Brian. She's like, she didn't remember me. Sad kids. Um, but anyways, the the yeah. episode ends. Yeah. Pia is in Argus, <laughs> and Mateo is mad at his dad. And they inject something into her vocal cords to control her power. And we have. T- we see John takes Nat's phone. Nat's heartbroken. And John's I, John's suit getting damaged. I literally said to Junia, like, yes. Yeah. Yes. And she's like, why? I'm like, he's got to fix it. Maybe he'll make it better and just won't look like Master Chief. Right. And maybe we'll get a little bit more of a look and steel suit. And, Hopefully. Um, Who's steel? He's this guy that helps Superman. You you wouldn't know. You like, you like only read that. Ba- you only read Batman. So. Yeah. That's not true. That's true. That's right. You also read uh, Marvel. That's not true. 
Oh, we got to get out of here. Uh, great episode. Great episode. Great, great couple of episodes, really. Um, this season's been the best, and is, the writing has been so top-notch that... I even, I even like where they have her, and he's telling Clark, like, they're still bad people, and you need to remember that. Just because she has cancer... Doesn't and mean. she and she became friends with Lois doesn't mean she's not a bad person. We actually seen in the episode where they revealed who she was, she's she killed everybody. She's yes. she's a That's, killer. She is a cold blooded killer. She is Bruno's assassin. Without yeah. without her, without them as a power couple, he wouldn't have rose to the power that he has. Yeah. So even though he has good intentions and does some good things, he's still a bad guy. You know what's really good about that? And show? we get this. What? And you know what? What Brian? Tell us. Is that everything you think is going to happen does not happen that way? Yes, that's why a really we, good thing. When we do guess something, much like the sun, we feel good about it. Yeah, like, we finally figured something out, and oh, something we, right in our face. You didn't realize we didn't realize until oh, we figured it out. I knew. Oh. I what, no, what, but what, what was right in our face is her name's Pia, and she's Automatopia. <laughs> See. <laughs> Pointed it out to me, and I was like, huh. now I want to go back and like see when they say her name, but right, but yeah. how far before the reveal. Well, I feel um, pretty damn stupid. The one the one really cool thing, and it's the nice little tag we go out on before the before the episode ends, Bizarro opens his eyes. And that's why I say they're saving the budget is to roll into that. Yeah. So we're gonna get out of here. We've been live, it's crazy, it's dinner time. Brian's here. What's up? This bump and live just- for a while. Yeah. Normally we have technical problems on my end and it screws us up for going out this long. So we're going to end it here. Have fun, everybody. Good night. (laughs) We're going to press pause and hear a few words from our other podcasts on Press Play Podcast Network. Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. Here's how Books with Brooks works. We read one book a month, and then we talk about it. Classics like Stephen King's The Shining, debut novels like We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang, and tons of other compelling, life-changing stories, one book and one month at a time. So come read along with us, and then listen in. Before we start this episode of Krypton Report, I want to take a moment and just give a shout out here to our Patreon. I know what you're thinking. Gosh, everyone's asking for money, and I get it. But our Patreon is only a dollar. One dollar a month that helps us keep the podcast going, and what we do is we try to find interesting shows and topics and whatever we want to talk about. We've done, as of this little thing, our last recordings were on the Scream series. Brian and Tyler, that's me, do our own show where we record in the car, and it's kind of funny, and we talk about pop culture or whatever is going on. We also have the Supernatural podcast we've been reworking. It's taken some time just because of life. But we do movie commentaries as well. It's something that James and I have done, what we used to do on the main show that we've started doing here. So for $1 a month on our Patreon, you can get those shows. There's at least four a month. Also, there's my movie pitch show that I do. But also what we want is if you're a Patreon, you can come on. You can come on the main show if you want. Or if there's something you want to come on and talk about, we can do it as a Patreon special. So all I want is for $1 a month, think about chipping in, joining our Patreon, and you have a voice to be a part of things. Follow the link in the link tree or in the show notes below, patreon.com slash kryptonreport. If you are like Tyler and James and can't get enough super talk, check out these other podcasts. Digging for Kryptonite, Supergirl Radio, The Last Sons of Krypton, The Superboy Legacy Podcast, All-Star Superfans, Superman the Animated Podcast, The Aspiring Kryptonians, Always Hold On to Smallville, The Geek of Steel, and Truth, Justice, and Hope. Remember to check out Krypton Report on all social media platforms. Go to linktree.com slash Krypton Report. You find out all of our report. This is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, keep listening to the Krypton Report. Hey, everybody. Tyler here. I'm making this video because I am a visual person, but I was also thinking about something after watching the trailers with Solomon and everything for the Flash movie about what might be happening. So follow along with my logic here, okay? So what we're looking at here is we're going to call this WB Earth. Okay? Now this is a post crisis 
Earth. This is where the movie takes place. This is where we had Aquaman. This is where the Flash starts. Whatever version of Justice League they subscribe to, and we'll talk about that in a minute. This is where the Flash starts, okay? Now, in the movie, we're introduced to another Flash, okay? And what I'm trying to figure out is how this works. So, in one trailer, it talks about, and this is theory one, that Barry travels back in time, and by doing that, creates kind of a flashpoint, right? And by doing so is when we get what I've heard called Young Barry, okay? Which is the non-powered Barry. And in that world, we get Kara instead of Kal-El. Okay, so when Zod shows up, we have original Barry, which I'm going to put OG Barry, young Barry, who had, he has to get powers to, and now Kara instead of kal -El. So he changed the timeline. Okay, so that's, that's we're working on theory one. First point is, how does Zod get there? Because in Man of Steel, Zod shows up because kal -El activates the scout ship, and Zod senses the beacon. So how does Zod get there? The other point that I'm wondering is, how does Keaton's Batman exist? Okay, so if he just changed time, is Keaton replacing Affleck on WB Earth? And why would he be older with the built-in history? Okay, now the clues are in, it says Young Barry, I broke time, I changed time. Now. Theory number two is OG Barry from here travels to what I will just for now call Earth 89 or Earth 92 for Batman Returns. Okay? In the first trailer, he talked about this is the only universe where my mom didn't die. That, this would explain Keaton. Okay. It could also explain Kara, that Kara landed here instead of Kal-El being an alternate Earth, that there's no metahumans, okay? And it also explains why Barry's mom's alive um, and he has no powers. But my question is, why would Zod come to this Earth then if Zod's supposed to be attacking the original Earth replacing Man of Steel. So, does that mean that Barry travels to this parallel Earth through the Speed Force? Okay? Because we saw in Crisis that he was in the Speed Force jumping around where he met Grant Gustin's Flash. Okay? And it's supposed to be kind of a multiverse film. So that would explain Keaton, Kara, and then Zod being here is kind of a question mark unless this Earth experienced something similar, but once again, why is Zod there? Or did he tra did he go to this Earth, found that his mom was alive here, goes back to his Earth, realizes he screwed up, and there is no Batman or anybody on this Earth, and he brings Keaton to this Earth with him. I know, it's enough to make your head go crazy, but it, the weirdest part about the whole thing for me is the fact that how do you get an older history history Batman to replace Affleck if you're just on this earth? Now Solomon has a question. Yes, Solomon. My question is, I think I know what Zod did. I think um, this universe is um, actually very time travel back. And um, super, and like what happens was there's no Superman, there's no Superman, and um, it was, it was like what happened if Zod went to this Earth, and that's what they were explaining. So I think why Zod went to that Earth is he um destroyed an Earth. Now he's and now um this Earth he can destroy. But there's no meta humans on the earth. 
and like before he went to this earth he destroyed this earth and and like you you you, you know what and and um and then um Zod brings some meta humans and he he brings heat in and then Alpha and the original Barry is there, and there's another Barry in this universe, and and then we have um then we have um Barry going to time for I mean Kara lands on this Earth and Superman lands on that Earth and they both split apart and. Barry time travels back to that Earth, and now they are on the Earth, and they have to fight Zod because because Bantry, Barry time traveled back where um, Zod was trying to destroy the universe. Which um, before he tried to destroy that universe, he destroyed that universe. So um, Barry actually fixed things. Could be. And also, I think that's why that. And his mom is still alive. I think mean, this is a past universe. Okay. I like everything he said. Now, here's a couple points I want to add to this real quick. One, is it continued from Zack Snyder's Justice League or Warner Brothers, what we like to call Justice League? Uh, the biggest thing that I'm going to throw out there is how they handled time travel. Because in Justice League, Flash was pointless. He was worthless. He didn't do anything. And since this new film focused on some sort of time travel and traveling in the Speed Force, he did time travel here. So how they handle the, the you've done this before, you've done more, and you and also the big thing is that we've talked about on the podcast is his yellow lightning means that he's gotten more powerful. And Zack Snyder's Justice League proves that he got he gets more powerful. In the trailer, okay, because one scene that we need to see in this film. Is in the trailer we see where he gets struck by lightning through him to the other Barry. Now that's either younger Barry or what I've called Earth 2 Barry or this Earth Barry. Okay? So, but we also see a scene where it looks like him strapped down getting his powers again. Okay? So th hold on, think with me. Getting his powers again. Because if yellow lightning is where he starts, and that's him leveled up. How is there a scene in the trailer where he's looking, Barry, our Barry, this Barry, is looking at his mom, but he has blue lightning. So, does he lose his power somehow? And then he has to get him back, much like in the Flashpoint uh, comic and film, and that's the scene where we see him, like, looks like he's laying down recreating the experiment because the other thing is this Barry no matter which Justice League you follow just started working in a crime lab that means that he must have been working at his school's laboratory when the accident happened that gave him his powers in the first place and we've not seen that and it looks like we're going to see that scene when he helps give powers to the other Barry so this is my brain trying to figure out what all is going to go on because I'm a continuity person and I'm trying to make sense. Solomon has another question. Okay, my question is I think I know how Barry got the yellow lightning and I know how the other Barry too, also know that as um, young Barry got... Bat Barry. Got, bat bat Barry. We'll call him Bat Barry. Yeah, that would be cool. Um, He's wearing the Batman suit as a Flash, so Bat Flash. Bat or, Flash. Let's do that Um, I think I know how. Got my idea. Yeah, shoot it. In the movie, you see some clips of Kara bringing the Flash up, and he and and he's yelling with blue lightning all around. What I think, you guys, God trust me on this. All right. What happens is we had the first fight with Zod. Okay. Um. We have the fight with Zod, and then um Zod accidentally took 
He like took Barry's powers away. Mm -hmm. And and then and then and then we have like and then Kara brings him up and gives him more power, yellow power, which makes him have the yellow lightning bolts. That dad, you can bring your figure over here and you will see that he has yellow lightning bolts. And his suit changed. If you, if you realize in the movie. He is um if you see the figure, his suit's yeah. different. So, so So what we're saying is that we have our theories. We, we're both really excited. We can't wait to find out what's really going on. Um, and how this time travel slash multiverse hopping is going to work. And I have one more thing. Yes, so I know how Barry, I know how young Barry, which we used to call him Barry too, I call him Barry too. I know how Barry too got his powers. Okay. When Supergirl saved Barry, um, I think Barry too got like somehow, when Supergirl punches Zaz in the trailer, Barry too gives the blue lightning. Because if you see, like when they're run together and their foot gets together, mm -hmm. and and like they both the lightning hits the ground and it's moving. Um, I think Bear, that's how um Barry too got his powers and how Barry got his yellow lightning powers. All right. So good theory. But that's where our head's at. Thanks for watching our video. Like I said, I'm a visual person, and it's a little easier to kind of write out here on the whiteboard here in the, uh, the super room, the Hall of Justice, because pass through it. So remember. Look up in the sky. We just want to say, if you've enjoyed this podcast, please check out other podcasts on the Press Play Podcast Network. $1 a month. You'll get extra special content that you don't get on the main show, like movie commentaries and whatever else comes out of our mouths. So check it out, patreon.com slash krypton.